Abdominal fat is interesting because it's very much so white adipose tissue. Okay, white adipose tissue is typically just unsightly and it's there for storage and it's there for extra energy. But what people don't always realize is there's an interesting way that we burn through white adipose tissue. And that is sort of by the, well, two things. One, it's the direct oxidation of it. But the oxidation of white fat actually requires a certain amount of cellular energy to kickstart that process in the first place. So imagine it as like fat cells being, this is grossly inaccurate from a literal perspective, but it illustrates it well. Imagine fat cells sitting inside like a bunker. Now you open the door and there's not like a magical vacuum that's gonna make the fat cells leave the bunker, right? But there is going to be maybe someone that starts kicking them out of the bunker. Well, in order to swift kick them out of the bunker, that requires a little bit of energy, right? A little bit of energy. And that energy is called NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. So there is a little spark of energy that is required. And we are now understanding through science that there are ways to increase NAD within the actual fat cells or tissue so that it can become liberated. So we'll get into how that works, but we're gonna talk about some ways that resistance training in specific ways can actually improve this too. So let's go ahead and break it down. And after today's video, I put a link down below for a sponsor on this channel, which is Sunday's Human Grade Dog Food. I have four dogs and one of them is a brand new rescue dog. And we feed them all Sundays. And we're just fans of Sundays because it's a good human grade dog food. Human grade meaning a human can sit down and eat it because it's human quality food. It's not weird random cuts, it's good stuff. And the nice thing is, is it tastes delicious for the dogs. They tell me so. But also it was created by a veterinarian that really saw a major flaw in the dog food industry. And we feed our dogs the same way we like to feed us. We pay attention to that. So anyhow, that link down below gets you a special discount. So in the top line of the description, you'll see a link and that is for a special discount off Sunday's dog food. So before we get into the white adipose tissue part, I wanna talk about an interesting way that resistance training in general helps you burn belly fat. It's kind of funny because like resistance training is great for so many different reasons. Yes, you build muscle, muscle burns fat, yada, yada, yada. But there's also like an energetic value that's happening at an NAD level. So we have what is called the electron transport chain, okay? And there's what is called electron transport chain efficiency. So anytime you eat food, that food is going to get broken down into electrons. The electrons are going to go through a electron gradient. When they go through that gradient, it's essentially how you like produce energy to ultimately like create a spark in a way. So with this, you have to look at like, how do we improve the efficiency? Because when electrons go through this process, a lot of times they end up sort of leaking. You've heard the term electron leakage or reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is typically caused by electrons leaking out of that process because it's an inefficient process. Think of it as like when we're manufacturing energy and don't get me wrong, I'm getting to a point here. We almost have to visualize it as like a big catcher's mitt. So when electrons are passing down this gradient, if that catcher's mitt is really small and weak, electrons are gonna like bounce off of it, right? It's gonna be an error in the field if you like baseball, right? It's gonna be an error because it's gonna bounce away. Okay, but if you increase the amount of proteins and you increase the integrity of that mitt, then the electrons have a better chance of getting caught and actually getting to the right spot. Less reactive oxygen species. Well, there was a study that was published in the journal Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise that had subjects do 12 weeks of resistance training and they did biopsies, like they actually cross-sectional area muscle biopsies, both before and after exercise, which, uh, or after the 12 week intervention, which was quite fascinating to see. First of all, what they found is there's optimized electron transfer between complex one and complex two, probably the most important complexes when you're looking at what's called the electron transport chain. Okay, so when you're creating energy. What that means is just like I implied, the electrons are getting through the system easier, smoother, and more efficiently. But there was a second finding they found that complex one protein abundance had increased. So there were more proteins in complex one. It meant that there were more proteins available for NAD production. NAD is the swift kick foot that we need to kick fat out of its area. Okay, in order for white adipose tissue to ultimately be liberated and get to a point where we can oxidize it, it needs a little bit of NAD. It also needs a little bit of NAD to heat up the brown adipose tissue, right? So there's this thing called 
NAMPT. Okay, this is getting complicated, but it's really important. To give a context of what NAMPT, I'm gonna reference a study really quick. It was published in PNAS and it was done in rodents, but this just illustrates what it is. They knocked out NAMPT, meaning they removed the action of that enzyme. So these mice did not have NAMPT. When they exposed these mice to cold exposure or fasting or caloric restriction, they did not get the same metabolic benefit, okay? Because NAMPT is required for the overall response from a stress to ultimately turn it into uh, a benefit, okay? What they found is that when they give these mice what is called NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, which is a common longevity supplement, it actually restored the function of, N of creating NAD even without the NAMPT. So basically, it created more energy for fat loss to occur in the both white adipose tissue and the brown adipose tissue. My point in saying this is that combining resistance training with NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, which is very common out there, supplementation could be highly effective from a deep core metabolic state to burn belly fat. Because I'm not gonna lie, like belly fat, I don't wanna say it's a mystery, but it is a little bit of a mystery. Like we know to a certain degree genetically that some people are gonna store fat around their midsection, but why do we store it mostly there? And when you ask people, you get varied answers. You get answers of like, oh, well, it makes sense from an evolutionary perspective, or it makes sense that the liver is gonna deposit it there. But then we also have visceral, it's complicated. And when you start getting down to it, it really comes down to like central adiposity being a marker of metabolic dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, and poor energy dynamics, right? Like not being able to have proper bioenergetics. And that comes down to NAD. So resistance training is probably the most powerful thing that you can physically do to reduce belly fat because it changes the NAD dynamics. It changes our production of NAD and it reduces oxidative stress. Then from a supplemental perspective to increase NAD more, nicotinamide mononucleotide seems to really take the cake as far as the evidence is concerned there. So if I had it my way, I would do like four days full body type resistance training. I would supplement NMN because it's inexpensive and I would let the resistance training and the non-exercise activity thermogenesis take off most of the weight, meaning I'd walk around more, I'd get more steps, I'd be more active throughout the day and I'd occasionally use cardio for an extra impetus on that. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.